to the local food money, the place and the sort of community behind Green Futures were working really with lots of goodwill and sticky tape and begging and borrowing and trying to pull things together and the sort of investment of local food has turned it from a limping community project to something that's up and running and that really shows the power of sort of public investment. Using food as a, as a medium and growing food it's sometimes not just about the food, it's about the other outcomes, which I'm sure many of the people in this room will all know. I see some people nodding. It's, you can do so many things with uh, just the process of growing food. It, it, it does wonderful things to your soul when you get soil under your fingers. I don't quite know what it is, but I do feel it in my bones. There are sharp knives on your table to cut the apple. Knives are sharp, your fingers are soft. Don't let the two meet. The ingredients and things you're using came from the allotment site. Just take it back to the allotment site. Sorry, I can't Thank God for that. Okay. What, do you, what do you grow? What do you grow? <laughs> <laughs> what grow like tomatoes and strawberries? Fabulous. And do you think the things that you're learning there today, do you think this is stuff that you can take home and, and pester your parents with and say, can we grow some yeah. of this? Good. <laughs> you carry on with that. So we could say that every pound invested in local food generates a return of seven pounds to society, representing a 700% return on investment. Local food projects really deliver outstandingly in, in terms of the health and well-being of the individuals involved. It's the sheer beauty and power of it. Many projects do not have this because we have uniquely something that's fundamental to us. If we do not eat, we die. We eat several times a day and we have within this project the sheer beauty of the experience that we are enabled to notice the pleasure we have when we eat, the joy we have when we are with other people and the sheer sensual experience of connecting to the earth which is our mother. We've really seen the power of small actions and I think there's such a desperate need to reconnect people to each other, to the soil, to the seasons, to the whole thing of the biodiversity and keeping that local pound and encouraging local business. Food does all of that stuff. percent of the people who engage in food growing for the first time spend more than two hours a week growing uh, food which is physical activity almost meeting or meeting their, their daily rec or their recommendations.
I would say just reach out and make contacts with whatever's going around your town or your village. And be strong by who you're connected with. Turn what you're doing into a small business. Reach out uh, m more people within your community to build that sort of ownership within the community of the local food project. We have 375 volunteers who think the chard is sexy. And it is, because there's always a story to tell, a hook, and that's what we teach. Learning, education, ingrained at every single level in a programme in all different directions. Our project innovatively uses existing models that are out there and networks them strategically um, in a way that I don't think has been done anywhere else. Um, we've, we've created a number of uh, sort of grassroots level community projects, orchards, apiaries, um, community supported agriculture, uh, field growing schemes, um, livestock cooperatives. We know there are over 4,000 volunteers every year in food projects, uh, over 75 gardens all over the city improving the lives of the communities in their area and those people who've, who've looked at a space and thought I want to do something here, I want to talk to my neighbour more, I want to eat some, some good local food. Those people, I think, deserve the award as, as much as we do, and I think we're really proud of what the city has done to, to make food growing part of what it does. And the really nice thing about it is, is just all those little stories about, you know, the people that you wouldn't expect, like, you know, Gordon, who's in his 80s, who took up beekeeping. And I've just started keeping bees at 80 year old, and I'm 83 now. If somebody told me I would be keeping bees, I told them I'd, they're crazy. But Catherine got me involved. I've never looked back with bees since. It's absolutely fantastic to come down here, do a bit of work in the garden, and then pick some fresh vegetables and take them home and eat them. Organic, super fresh, super tasty.